Hi everyone, welcome to Julie Reads Her Bookshelf. I'm Julie and uh, it's been a while since my last video I know and the reason for that is that I've sort of been recovering from a reading slump. You know when you read a book that you sort of struggle with for a while, it can really take you out of your reading rhythm and I had that experience <laughs> with my March of the Mammoth pick uh, which was Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. And I started reading this in March and actually I did really well throughout March. Uh, by the beginning of April, I was probably two thirds of the way through this book. Uh, and then I went on a holiday to China and to Korea for three weeks. And I didn't take this book on holiday with me. It was just too big. So when I got back, I sort of tried to get into the last third of the book. And for whatever reason, it was just such a struggle. So in the end, I ended up spending all of March some of April and then all of May reading this bloody book and, and to be honest I'm a little bit disappointed with it and it's it's a shame because I know so many people in my life in my reading life who have found this book to be this incredible world onto itself and it's for me it doesn't quite get there for me it's too frustratingly flawed and the flaws really distract from what's good about this book. I'm not gonna discuss the plot of Les Miserables because most people know what the plot is. Uh, and if you don't, uh, just know that the musical is a fairly accurate adaptation of the main plot of the, the book. And in fact, the musical is probably a lot better paced <laughs> than the book itself, which tends to go off on a lot of tangents. So with Les Miserables, Victor Hugo wanted it to be his big romantic magnum opus. He finished this book in exile uh, because of his opposition to Napoleon III. And so because of that, I felt like there is a lot in this book about social progress. There's a little bit of realism. There's a lot in this book against the monarchy and against absolute power and it was trying to do too many things at the same time. It was trying to tell a story and I and I felt like that should have been, been the first and primary goal of the book. Um, but at the same time, he was trying to create a world. He was trying to um, write about the historical events at the time and also reflect on what was for him contemporary events. And it was trying to be political and personal at the same time and there was just too much political point scoring going on. Uh, there were too many characters in the book that felt like set pieces that serve as some paragon of virtue or a cautionary tale. And of course there were some memorable characters too, but I feel like uh, the book kind of lost its way because it was trying to do all of these things at the same time and it didn't quite come together for me. The other major problem with this book is that Victor Hugo had an absolute inability to edit. Uh, you know that age old saying that you gotta kill your darlings. He killed no darlings in this book. It, it, was, it was really, really frustrating to be reading through quite a pacey plot and suddenly you hit 50 pages about Waterloo. I think that's the point where a lot of people first give up in this book um, because it comes up pretty quickly at the start. You get 50 pages about the Battle of Waterloo uh, of which only the last page has any purpose in the overall narrative of this book. Um, there's about 20 pages on the role of convents and what Victor Hugo thought about convents. I think the worst offender in all of this was um, in the middle of the barricade scene towards the final sections of the book when all was lost and you, pa you have action, you have um, people being absolute heroes and martyrs and fighting in the name of the revolution and then suddenly you hit a couple of chapters about the sewage system in Paris. And of course the sewers do play a role in the background to one of the final parts of the book but there was absolutely no need to tell me the history of the waste system in Paris. Absolutely no need. And this is one of those really, really frustrating things that takes you out of the plot of the book and it really disconnects you from the characters. 
my final complaint about this book, <laughs> and I promise I will talk about some good things about this book too, but my final complaint about this book is the main female character, Cosette, because she's just so undercooked. And I remember watching the mu musical a couple of years ago and thinking, Cosette is so boring as a female protagonist. Like Eponine, who's you know in this book for maybe only about half of it, uh, is so much more complex and interesting a character than Cosette ever was. And I wondered when I was reading through this book whether Cosette would be slightly different because actually a lot of characters in the musical that I felt were quite flat had a bit more dimension to them in the book. The book actually, and that's what the one thing that the book does better than the musical, which is it gives you more depth to all of the characters, but not so much Cosette. Um, I felt like Cosette was potentially a little bit more interesting, particularly the parts where she was sort of aware of her beauty and using it um, in a way that you know, was maybe a little bit manipulative in the book. Uh, that part I don't feel like came out at all during uh, the musical. But other than that, she's kind of just this sugar and spice, totally nice character and incapable of surprising you. And that's the problem with, with having a female character that is somehow this paragon of virtue and innocence. It's really hard to get on their side when they lack that extra dimension to them. So I want to end on a good note. Um, despite all of the flaws, I actually think there are a lot of good elements about this book. Like I said, it didn't quite all come together for me, but there was enough there for me to actually get through 1300 pages, even though at times I was really frustrated with it. Um, the first thing that I really loved about this book is actually the primary storyline. Um, the main story for Les Miserables is fantastic. And it's not a coincidence that this has been adapted into a best-selling musical, uh, a number of movies by now. It's, it's got everything. It has a love story. It has stories about revenge and redemption. Uh, there's war, there's, there's revolution, there's fighting, but then there's also kind of moments of um, reflection and moments of tenderness in all of this as well. So actually the storyline is fantastic and I just wish that this book was about 500 pages shorter. I, think, I feel like if this was an 800 page book and had been edited, it would have retained that kind of all encompassing world of a book vibe, but it would have lost a lot of the distracting elements and the philosophizing. Uh, but I have to acknowledge that the plot is really good. The second thing I really loved about this book is that there were a number of extremely moving scenes in the book, um, starting with the Bishop of Digne and the way that he redeems the character of Jean Valjean when he steals from the bishop. And it really shows you the power of mercy when mercy was not deserved. And Jean Valjean, because of that experience, then goes on to further redeem other people and to save other people. And live a life of virtue and I feel like that kind of the power of that tiny moment and the way that it then reverberates through the entire book is incredibly moving. There's also a lot of incredible characters. Uh, Eponine is a fantastic character. There's not a lot of pages dedicated to her but you really get a sense of who she is. The Thenardiers or Thenardiers are uh, also fantastic characters. They're sort of evil, conniving, but the mother ultimately loves her daughters, but not the son. Um, they're just wonderfully three-dimensional characters. And that's why I was a little bit disappointed with Cosette, because I feel like a lot of these side characters are very much flesh and blood. And then you get Cosette, who's so undercooked as a female character. I also really loved Victor Hugo's depiction of the children of Paris in this book. Uh, Gavroche is kind of the symbol for all of the kids in the book. Uh, but there's more than Gavroche, right? He shows these kids who are running around in absolute poverty, but somehow surviving and somehow looking out for each other and finding food, finding creative ways to get through these difficult times. And it's really heartbreaking, but at the same time, really commendable. Uh, so there's actually just a lot of warmth and humanity in this book. I just wish it all came together 
and like I said, it's like when you had all of the right ingredients for a great dish, but somehow the execution meant that it doesn't taste as good as it should. So that's how I feel about the Miserable. I'm very happy that I got through it. Uh, I'm very happy it's been read. If I read nothing else this year, I feel like this has been a fantastic accomplishment, but it has thrown me off my reading rhythm a lot. So I feel like I'm sort of getting back into my baby steps by reading authors that I know won't fail me uh, and reading sort of smaller books to get me into the rhythm uh, that I usually have when I'm reading again. So other than that, I will be back with a June recap and hopefully more books than one. Uh, but for now, uh, we've got Victor Hugo, Le Miserable. I have finally finished it and I feel rather accomplished that I've actually managed to get through my March of the Mammoth, even though this is the first time ever, I think, where I haven't really loved a really large book that I read. So, have you read Le Miserable? Uh, are you in the camp of this being a life-changing book or are you more like me? and feeling quite ambivalent about having gone through 1300 pages of a book that is deeply, deeply flawed. Uh, let me know in the comments, otherwise I will see you hopefully very soon. Bye!